So you want to create a world famous pizza company, but your name is not John and you're not a father. That's unfortunate. Hey guys, I'm about to by Kai. I'm Kai and today we're back once again taking a look at how to create a cool text outline effect thing and take your text to the next level, um, essentially in Blender. So let's go ahead and get started. It's actually super easy to do. Um, let's go ahead and I'm just going to drag a box over top of um, uh, the cube and the lamp. Hit delete on our keyboard. Select our camera and hit Alt G to clear the location and hit Alt R to clear the rotation. Then hit R X on my keyboard and then hit nine zero on my numpad to rotate at 90 degrees on the X axis. Left click to confirm that and then hit G Y to move the camera backwards. Hit zero to go into the camera's view and now we're set and ready to go. Nice. Hit Shift A and we'll search for a text object right there. Then we need to hit RX90 once again to rotate on the X axis by 90 degrees. Um, and then left click to confirm that. And you can see we can see we can see the text now, which looks really good. Um, in the text tab down here, the bottom right, let's go to the font section. Hit this little folder icon, and then you can see this will open up a nice little folder option for your fonts on your PC whatever way, what may have you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just choose a super basic font here. We're going to do, um, let's just, let, you know what, let's do impact. Why not? That's a super basic font overused, but it's okay. It's still great. Um, let's go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode and we'll change this to what we want it to say. I'm going to make this say, um, 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 future. Yep. It's going to say future in all capitals. Not T future, it's gonna say future. That yep, there you go. It's gonna say future, not T future. Perfect. Um now with that done, let's go ahead and hit tab to go back out of edit mode and let's go ahead and scroll on down to the uh, paragraph alignment and make sure we change this from left to center. And now you can see we have that looking good. I'm also gonna go ahead and take the uh, liberty liberty to change the Y offset down a little bit so it's a little bit more in the center. So this is gonna be for impact, it's gonna be about negative. Um, 0.25 to be in the center right there. This little orange dot is, is kind of the the, or, the pivot point on this bad boy. So just to get it look, you know, right, we'll do that. Um, nice. I'm going to scale this before we do anything to it. So hit S to scale it up a little bit and then hit SX to scale it on the X axis if you want to be a little thicker like that. You know, put a little meat on the bones, you know what I mean? Um, there we go. Nice. It looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do one more thing. We're going to duplicate this. So hit Shift D, Shift D, then hit Z to move this straight up like that right above it. So we're going to do this right now. So this will be the, the, the full one and this will be the outlined one. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit, um, go up to object, sorry, go up to object and then change this to uh, convert and we'll change this to mesh right there. So now when we hit tab on this mesh, you can see that it shows us the vertices instead of this one where we can actually still edit what the text says. Um, so there you go. Um, what I look, I've been looking at this word future too long. It looks looks like I, I misspelled it. Future it looks weird. I don't know why it looks weird. It looks like food food to re. Okay, I don't even know what that's about. Anyway, um, let's hit tab to go into edit mode. Um, hit A to select everything. Make sure it's all orange. Um, and then hit X limit to dissolve. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and hold down shift to select every single one of these letters here, including the I, both pieces. Make sure you grab both the pieces of the R, not the I. What did I say? The makes both pieces of the R. Apparently, I don't know how to read letters anymore. I should go back to kindergarten. That's crazy. I think I dropped out of kindergarten. Not, not going to lie. Um, let's go ahead and hit uh, I to inset this. And you can see when we inset this, it creates a second face inside of the face that we have, which is really cool. So if I zoom in here, you can see hit I, and then I'm going to, on my numpad, I'm going to hit about maybe uh, 0 0.01, hit, hit left click to confirm that, there you go, now you can see when I zoom in, uh, you can see we have this nice thing, so if, if I delete, um, and then go to uh, faces, you see it deletes all the faces that we had selected, which is nice, so when you zoom out, and you see we have this really, really cool outline effect that a lot of graphic uh, designers use, a lot of uh, artists use, a lot of motion graphics have in it, which is very, very sweet, <coughs> excuse me, so the really cool thing about this is now you, you can kind of like go back and forth between the full one and the outlined one, which is super cool. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do an animation that is uh, that I think is really cool. So we're going we're gonna to move this full one uh, back a little bit. So let's hit uh, GY, move it back behind the camera. We don't need that one right now. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one and go to the uh, modifiers tab and then change and then add a modifier of array. And instead of left to right, we're going to go up and down. So put this X factor. <laughs> Love that show. Uh, put this on zero. And then I think it's, what is it, Y? Yeah, Y. We're going to put Y on 1, or actually negative 1. I'm going to go down instead. Negative 1, negative 1 like that. Nice. So you can see we have two of these now stacked on top of each other. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that the, the count 
is way higher than this. So you can see we put this on about 10, and you can see we have a future, 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 which you've probably seen some kind of designs like this before, which I think is really, really sweet. Um, let's let's put some spaces in between the future words so they're not like directly touching each other. I'm gonna make this um oops, I'm gonna make this point uh negative one point two. Negative one point two, yeah. Negative one point two, that was pretty good. It's about the same space that's in between the letters, is in between the words up and down, which is really cool. So um let's go ahead, grab these. Um, hit G Z to move them up like this, and then we can kind of like make like a, a nice smooth animation, which is pretty cool stuff. So let's go ahead and um, change the start frame to zero, and let's go to zero. I'm gonna put this about there. So I'm gonna zoom in here and make the first one start right at the top of the camera there. So I'm gonna line up the the F to the top. And then we're going to hit I to enter a location keyframe. And then we're going to go to frame, maybe frame 100. And then we will go up about maybe two of these. And actually, maybe three. And then we'll rest this F on the top. And that should be super close. Hit I, location. And now we're going to make our in frame, frame 100, down at the bottom here. We'll change this in frame to 100. 100. And we're going to go to the second tab here and change the frame rate from 24 to 60. And we're going to do one more thing, but I'll play it first. So this, it looks like this. So it kind of goes up and then goes. So it looks like it loops because we have it lined up to the same place. If you line it up um, at the same exact place, which is the bottom of the F for me. Um, but what we're going what to do is because it slows down and speeds up, you can see it like slows down at the ends in the beginning, which I don't want. Let's go ahead and put our cursor into the top left of the screen here and then click and drag this open and then hit this little button right here and change this to the graph editor move that away just click and drag it away um, select the text and you can see here we have this nice little curve which is not what we want it's really cool for specific things but for today I want to change this to a linear curve so let's go ahead and select both of these by clicking and dragging a box over top of them so this one and this one so drag a box over both of those right click and then go ahead and change the interpolation mode to linear so now when we play this you can see it is a very smooth animation so it just continues so it's like it never stops which is really cool I'm going to select our camera, and so we can not, you know, so we don't see the rest of this. I'm going to go to the camera tab, go to camera, sorry, not camera, a viewport display, and turn passer part 2 all the way up. So you can just see what the uh, camera is supposed to see. Um, nice. So with all of that done, I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of our 3D cursor because it's bugging me. There we go. All right, nice. So with that done, it looks really, really cool. I think I'm going to actually spread this out because it's too fast. So change the in frame to 200 and then just click and drag. Hit G. Select this keyframe right here. Hit G and move it over, and then click left click to confirm that. There we go. Nice. So that's way better, way easier on the eyes. I feel like it's uh, you know less fast and stuff. Um, I think I want to do something cool with the camera here. So what I want to do is um, I want to put this few other future word back into the mix, but only on one of them. So let's go ahead and ooh, this is off center, and I didn't even know. Ooh, okay. So I see. Let's go ahead. And we shall reset that. If, that. if that gets off center for you as well, that is very strange, but we'll fix it. I'll fix it super quick. We'll just redo that. It's all right. Everything is okay. Don't even worry about it. I'm going to do it like this and then just reset that. I don't know how that got off center from how it was, which is very strange. But listen, things happen, you know? Things dang and happen. All right, uh, GZ, move it up, GZ, move it up, and we'll line up the bottom of the F. There we go, nice. So, uh, that short little hiatus, everything should be still lining up perfectly, and it loops like that, perfect. So nice. With the word future, uh, the thick one, the full one, I want to line this up with one of the outlines that we have here. So I'll zoom in, and I'll try and line that up perfectly like that. And we'll move it ahead of it. So we'll move it to GY and move it slightly in front of the other text. Now, this is okay because the perspective is going to be off, but it's okay because I want to select our camera and change this from perspective to orthographic. So now everything should be the same size no matter what. Um, and then we will select our thick word and then select the outline words. Hit Control P and set parent to objects. Now when the, uh, the outline words move, it will move the other one as well. So you can see... It looks something like that. Now, with this, I think um, what I want to do is I want to make this blink. So this is gonna we're gonna have this blink in and out. So I'm gonna go ahead, 
20 frame, 40 frames here, and we're going to make this blink. So hit I um, on frame 40. I'm gonna have my cursor. Uh, have my cursor. I'm gonna put my cursor into the 3D workspace. Hit I, select scale, move ahead one frame to frame 41. Hit S zero, and then left click, and then hit I to uh, enter another scale keyframe. So now you can see when this goes away, it kind of blinks away like that, which is really cool. Um, and now what we can do is we can just go ahead and select both of these keyframes, hit Shift D, duplicate them over a little bit, and then just kind of repeat them. Um, actually, wait, we need to, we need to do another keyframe. That is my mistake. Um, I'm going to select the first keyframe, so the one where it's like visible. Um, hit Shift D, and then move it uh, two frame frames over. So we're gonna have the this full frame, so where it's like regular size. Then we have the one where it's zero, and so it's in, it's like gone. And then we go back to the full size like that. So. Like that, which is perfect. But what we need to do is we need to spread this out a little bit. So I'm going to hit G on this last keyframe, move it over a little bit, and then grab this one where it's like gone. Hit Shift D, duplicate that, move it over as well. So now you can see we have something like that, which it like, it like blinks, which is really, really cool. And then I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate these keyframes over and over again um, and kind of, you know, do something like that, which is pretty sweet, actually. Nice. And then we'll maybe do that one more time before it goes out. So hit shift D, duplicate it over here. And now we have something that blinks like that, which looks really, really cool. So um, I think I might maybe do it one more time before earlier. Nice. So that looks really cool. I think I, I think maybe I wanted to not be as sporadic. So let's do that. Let's do this again, actually. So I think I want to be more in like regular increments. So we'll do Yeah, we'll do like that instead actually. That's fine. That looks good. And then we'll duplicate this again. Move it about that distance. Yeah, sure. And then when it comes back in Maybe it won't come in right then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is cool. We'll have it blink maybe the whole time that it's in until the end. Yeah. And then when it comes back, it starts blinking again. That's really cool. I like that a lot. So there's a lot of different things you could do with this. Obviously, there's a lot of really, really cool um, like techniques and a lot of different things that um, can, can make this look really, really sweet. You can grab the camera here. You can select the camera. Um, and then move it a little bit. So let's go ahead and actually real quick. Let's make a little pivot point around this. So hit shift a and we'll search for an empty plane axis and then we'll hit uh, alt G to move that back to the center because my 3d cursor is off. If your 3d cursor gets off, if I put it back on, if your 3d cursor gets off the center, just go to object and then go down to wait, where is it at? No, uh, view. I always forget where this is at. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's snap. Yeah. Uh, object. I was right the first time object. And then, um, cursor to world origin. So to put it back in the center there for you. So select the, uh, the empty and then actually select the, the camera, then hold on shift and select the empty hit control P and set parent to objects. Now we move the empty to rotate the camera with it, which is really cool. So grab the empty double tap R and you can move this whatever direction you want to move it in, which is really, really sweet. So we can move it something like that, you know, a little R Y move it like that. And now we have a cool looking flat style, you know, cool thing like that, which is really sweet. So, and then that word blinks, which is really pretty nice. So that is pretty sweet. Now I do want to do some color with this. So I'm going to make uh, our scene solid white at uh, the background, at least. Actually, wait, I'm going to do solid black actually. And then we'll select the outline words first. Uh, hit this little drop down in the material tab. Select material. We'll, we'll name this uh, white like that. Um, and then change this from principal, B principal BSDF to emission. Nice. And then we go to render viewport chain so I can see what I'm doing. Turn the grid off. Um, I'm going to do, 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 do. I'm going to go to the main tab here and go to color management and change this from filmic to standard, by the way. So it's like actually white instead of being like off white. Select the word future, hit new. And I'm going to do the same thing, principal BSDF to emission. And I'm going to change this to maybe a yellow color or something. Now you can see here, we have that little bit of that white showing through because we have this at an angle. Now, if you want to move this a little closer to the white, you can. So hit G Y and then hold down shift and, and try to get that as close to the white as is possible. So you don't see as much of that um, if you don't want to, which I think that looks fine the way that it is. There is maybe slightly more. We can get that closer. Like we could 
hold down shift and really really move it backwards on grab that and there we go and there that's probably good you might be able to see that glitching through i'm not sure that's fine all right looks good cool now let me see if it looks like rendered uh yeah it's fine looks great all right cool nice i don't think i like yellow though i think we're gonna go with like looks pretty cool looks pretty wicked nice all right cool so um it just looks really strong um really bold which is really uh nice and i might even flip this around I might have that one be red and this one be white that looks even cooler whoa that looks wicked all right nice cool so this is definitely what i would uh what i would do if i was doing a design like this it looks really really sweet and it loops which is also very very cool so um you can also turn bloom on if you want to a little bit maybe make this red glow a bit this reddish pink kind of oh yeah it looks really cool yeah, it looks cool. Nice, 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 nice. Like I said, I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. This is a very, very simple, very easy thing to uh, do and pull off. Um, and it's very, like, customizable as well. You can just make this green. You can make it, you know, all different colors. It looks really, really nice. Hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Um, but until then, bye-bye.